Oh, can't put my finger in it. These are 245s and these are 225s. So I got some new wheels. All right. All right. It's got to focus. All right. So these were kind of weird. So these are obviously Workmeister S1s. These are the two piece wheels. You can see kind of how they connect down there. Not really, but kind of. And then on the back side, yeah, little spec right there for you, maybe. With uh, plenty of wheel weights to work with. Oh yeah, so on the back side, you can see they are welded in. So they're two piece, but they're not going anywhere. So they might as well be one piece, but. So we got eight and a half ET32. Uh, these are five by 120 wheels. And then we have nine and a half ET going home. Uh, 35 I believe they were supposed to be for that car originally but then suddenly I got talked into how spacers aren't that big of a deal as I run Pontiac wheels with the uh, slightly wrong bolt pattern <laughs> and I was like hey I need an autocross and track set up because I'm doing that this year didn't really film the video on it but here's a little bit then I found these online uh, dude that goes by heavyweight wheels 5x108. Uh, I started to think they're E36 fitment, but they're 16s, which maybe that's why they went on the radar because by the way, they were for sale for like eight months, I think, on eBay and on his somewhat small Instagram. So either people weren't seeing them or, you know, maybe E36 guys don't really want 16s. I feel like everybody goes up to 17s even though uh, E36s that aren't M's, like this one behind me, it's got 15s on it right now. It's like, it's so cool to me that they can run that small wheels and they're still great cars. So I don't know why they went under the radar, but they're pretty dang clean and they're Workmeister S1s, dude. I'm not crazy about the gold. The gold would look good on the green car, but silver looks good on everything. So I'm gonna change them silver. I'm gonna do a little bit of prep today. Oh, and also I already got tires, obviously. I figured, if I paint them, even though if they cure, everything should be fine at a tire shop, but I'd rather get the tires on, paint them, let it cure, and be the only one touching it very soon after painting them to keep them fresh. So anyway, uh, let's get to work and get them silver. It's recording. Mm -hmm. We got the little work decal off of three of them right now, and then this is the fourth one. Leaving a little adhesive behind that I'll take off before prepping for paint. Using a flat blade, which I don't recommend. Got a few years in the tin industry that's got me decent with the blade, but I'll probably still scratch these a little bit. Good thing I'm repainting. So here I go, watch closely. Here he goes. So it's breaking off in pieces without me heating it up, but that's okay. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Clean off. Um, to them, I'm going to be right back. <laughs> no more levels. And I remembered I have a workbench that keeps things at the appropriate level, so I started using it. Pretty novel, huh? First one is scratched down with this 800 grit gray scotch brite stir. Three more to go. This tape is really annoying to get down in there, but. We're trying our best, so keep rolling. So boosted to the moon at 10,000. These guys are washed, sanded, not in that order, and should be ready to paint. I'm letting them dry overnight and then we'll mask them off everywhere they need to be masked off and paint the faces. So I'm stoked. Oh, someone's flooring it by. So anyway, here's me and my wheels. This is such a weird angle. So yeah, we're ready to paint and that will be tomorrow or the next day, but you guys don't care because it'll be one second from now that I say, hey, what's up guys? 
What's up guys? A few days later now, instead of just one, that was quick, huh? Though I'd probably rather be building a fort because it's a little less stressful. This is not a fort. I was a good fort builder back in the day though. Here's what we got. It's been two days because each one of these has taken like 45 minutes to actually mask off and get ready. So just got all of this set up. Terrible makeshift. I'm not even gonna call it a paint booth. We'll call it a paint fort. Next, I'm gonna get all these surfaces wiped off. I've kind of let everything chill for a second. I've been moving a lot of stuff. So let the dust settle for a second. We'll get these wiped off and then we will lay down our primer. I'm very excited to get this moving. No more gold. I'm gonna clean prep and then shoot this somehow. We'll figure it out. base coat metallic silver custom wheel paint um got this i've heard of good results from friends like rude boy scott of renown usa um so i got this and then i got a nicer 2k clear coat but we're gonna run with this primer is on drying right now and this is next <laughs> it off the 2k you always see on the internet so here's already where i'm failing the instructions but yeah so we've been shaking for two minutes and then we're gonna let... oh god shake it with the thing on the bottom for two minutes don't fall off What's up? I'm looking pale. Let's see, these guys are done. Three coats of base. Of them got almost four because I kind of touched a little bit because I had a piece of dust in it. Um, and then they got two coats of clear. I was gonna do three, but I just barely finished the first can and didn't really want to crack the second can of 2K clear because it was 28 bucks and I wouldn't use a ton of it. So I, I basically got three coats on the spokes. I'm gonna let them dry completely now and then either decide if I wanna peel the masking at that point. But regardless if I do that or not, I'm going to go set them out in the sun and get them some UV time. So I'll get them a little hardened up as fast as possible. But uh, hey, they're silver. They're not gold anymore. And I'm stoked about that. They're not gonna be perfect. If I have to put a percentage on everything I do, they're probably, they're 70 percenters, we'll say. Maybe even that, I don't know. Cause I use a nice clear, but uh, I see some dust specks, I see some dirt nibs, I see some marks on my face from my mask. Maybe if they're orange peely, I can wet sand them just a wee bit and polish them. But again, a reminder, these are autocross and track wheels. They are gonna get beat up. I just wanted them silver. Not gonna be the hugest deal at the moment. And I mean, I mean, come on, you think I'm taking myself that serious right here? <laughs> have had some days in the sun to cure and harden up the clear coat and they're looking good except for a little stuff like that but ABC oh you can definitely see it over there there we go so that's the orange peel we're dealing with so what I'm doing now is taking some water 2,000 and 3,000 
and we are sanding it down and what we are trying to do fairly obvious is take the orange peel this is after it's sanded and dried you can see where there's still some orange peel left so basically once it dries you get this little bit of haze what you don't want to see is still any evidence of deeper spots which is obviously what orange peel is is high spots and low spots so still got a little bit to go on some of this and I'm not gonna go perfect on it because a little bit of orange peel is not a big deal and I would rather have a little orange peel than go all the way through some areas that might have been thinner we have one almost done and obviously three to go <laughs> metallic matte wheels right now but uh, I will polish these in just a bit tonight but looking pretty sweet I'm focus going a little bit thin on clear coat on inside of some of the spokes because we're getting gray. Definitely learning a few lessons in garage painting here. I should have gone heavier on a few different things because I can see some gold in some spaces which is crazy so like every coat I went thin on. Uh, yeah but these are gonna get beat out for a while. They were really easy to paint so I'm not too worried about if I have to do a repaint sooner rather than later. Either way they're looking good for now. stage is done on this third wheel now it's time to put the final kiss the icing on the cake let's stick this sticker so another thing uh, you guys are going to notice before I say anything or if I didn't say anything is this Meister sticker is blue these spoke ones I chose are black I ordered the spoke stickers before I realized that these were on there aka before the wheels even got here so for now they're black and blue like uh, you beat bed bugs at night if they bite I don't know if anybody knows that nursery rhyme I'll change one of them in the future maybe these black or you know who cares doesn't matter so let's get these finished I'm just gonna coat it now with the stickers on and adhered well to the spoke. Give it a coat of some graphene product and considered it sealed up and done. Alright, 
are levitating with these wheels now being done. Uh, I am in prep for autocross, going to do swap brake pads right now and just put the fresh wheels and tires on so I don't have to do it at the, the course tomorrow. But one thing I needed to do as well, if you look up here, I don't recall offhand what, uh, I, I know these are the original bolts, but I don't know what washers I used. But what looks like I might have a broken washer is actually a oblong washer now uh, under pressure. Wasn't hard enough and has been since squished. So I got some new bolts and single harder washers. So we're gonna swap those bad boys out on each side and be looking good there. And I think I actually still have, yeah. <laughs> Can't believe this is taking me so long to do. See that right there? That is a pointy screw going into my spare tire well. Uh, it has never punctured the TRX wheel and tire. Well, it's not gonna puncture wheel, but it's never punctured the tire in there, which is hilarious. Uh, and I don't know why, what's even more hilarious, why I've never looked at taking care of it. So today's that day because I'm gonna put some wheels and tires, AKA one of my normal ones as a spare in there and don't feel like I want a screw poking it. So I'll show you the inside in a bit. It's funny. I'm an idiot. It's funny. TRX wheel and screw. Very pointy screw. Looks like it should pop a tire screw. Yeah, I don't know either. It's probably some surface rust I should take care of in here. Oh yeah, and there's a big old dent. So I guess, actually, hopefully that fits because I forgot about that. The previous owner did that to make the exhaust fit. So class act always stays with the car. I really don't fucking get it, dude. So here's how we're running it to keep this clamped up. This is how I helped it get on too, because this is such an annoying bracket design to try to work with, where it like sticks itself in on the top side and then you have to bend the whole thing down and over the bushing. So we got some, what are these things called again? Can't remember the name of anything today. Anyway, these things are clamped on, holding it as well as it can, and hopefully the new washer I put in fits in between them currently. So I'm gonna try to work quickly here. Ta-da, dot yellow zinc dough. There it is. It's like a locking washer that got spread apart. The culprit. I didn't know today. I was worried about these Turner studs not being long enough because they have these bullet nose type studs. So I have these extra ones I was thinking about running. I tightened it up as tight as it could go to see how many threads I would have engaged on the nut. And the homie Jig Time Bassard, Bossard, the boss, um, let me know that for whatever size hardware it is, which this is M12, so 12 millimeters, you need roughly 12 millimeters of engagement for it to be proper, strong, anything more than that isn't gonna make it much stronger. If anything, emulated the amount of nut on thread right here, measured it, and it came out to roughly, we're at there, it's about 18 millimeters. So I think we're strong enough. So I'm gonna keep running these black ones instead of the extra other ones I had, just cause I'm a dork and I like to run matched things. Dork. Okay, front's to go and we're set. Pads are swapped with HP pluses. We got 20 mil spacers on the front. We got 15 on the rear. And the only thing left to do at this point, aside from plugging that hole, is mounting these 
Here's where we stand. Drove around the block, everything seems to fit fine. Put a photo on the screen right now of how close this is when it turns, but hopefully when it's under load, the fender won't obviously be compressing when the tires face that certain direction, but overall, fitment looks pretty darn good. I know by certain sizes it could fit a little more, but like, really I think this is about as chunky as each bit wants to get for wheel size slash tire size. You could do 245s up there, you could do maybe 65s back here, but like, everything is Pretty damn cozy. On the inside of this wheel, I think I have a photo of it. The barrel, the lip of the barrel on the inside is super close to the trailing arm, so it's 15 millimeter spacers were needed. Oh, also, didn't show this. Trimmed, obviously not perfectly, these rear fenders. They always had this little kink, like right here in the middle where it came down, kinked, and then went a little bit straight forward. I always hated it, like always, always. And I don't know why it took me this long to do it, but it did, so I straightened it out a little bit. I thought about following that little kink in the body line right there, like following this thing. Uh, but for now, I at least just straightened it, kind of, and it's just a lot better to look at. So yeah, that's where we're at. Looking all right, so autocross tomorrow, and that'll be the real test and no hiding anything. We'll see. Feeling all right, excited, and I'm, well, I'm stoked, it's cool. Hey.